Welcome to the Hop Nation USA Podcast. It's episode 96 with me, Andre the Giant. I'm also joined by co-hosts. Co-host Adam, say hello. Ah, how you doing tonight, Andre? I'm very good. Glad to be here. Other co-host Dennis, say hello. Super fresh out there, play boys. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I, I held in that laugh so hard, I thought I was about to have a stroke. <laughs> that that was definitely some vein busting I saw oh on both goodness. your faces. <laughs> that was that, insane. That was an effort. <laughs> wow. Well, I guess I broke it and Jason doesn't have to pay up now. But <laughs> Oh, no. I think he still will. <laughs> he, he, he'll pay up when he shows up on the show. Yes. <laughs> An intro like that, he better send it in the mail. He better do something. <laughs> But yes, it is Hop Nation USA episode ninety six. I don't, I don't know what the Sportman reference Sportman is. Sportman reference unknown right now. Okay, because that's an odd number to work with. Okay, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know sports well enough, so it'll just More be than whatever. Me, I, don't I don't know, know sports know. at all. I feel like NASCAR has something with ninety six. Mm, I, I could get you ninety five. Damn it! I mean, that was the old Bill Elliott number. Yeah, but <sighs> Bill Elliott plus one. I played Billy Elliot's racing on the uh, Game Boy. Was that or was oh. that not a good time? It was okay. See? <laughs> but you've got a Game Boy? Yeah, way back in the day. Oh, uh, okay. No this, no, this is what this was original two color Game Boy. Yeah. Where you had green screen and yep. and deep green pixels. Yep. That's what Bill Elliot's racing was. I couldn't was play on. that one. It was invisible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, unfortunately you had to wait for Game Gear to come no, out. Game Boy Color. The Game Boy that Color. Too. That's, That's right. it. That's so which did come out first? The Game Gear or the Game Boy Color? Uh good question. I think it was actually Game Gear was first. I think you might be because right. that thing was a total battery hog. Sega. Huh. Yeah. Sega. And then, yeah. Then Nintendo figured it out and it was like, oh, we can put this in a small thing and it still Dude, just they crushed right. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They crushed That was the majority of my childhood. You got to think back then, there was no cell phones. There was no, no. Candy Crush. Mm-mm. Like, you did that. And on top of that, you had to have the lights on because there was no backlit screen. No. Nope. But I'm telling you, what the high life was, was if you're on a road trip and you were able to have your Game Boy. Or your brother's Game Boy, in my case. Or a friend's Game Boy. <laughs> or whoever was available. Because how good of a friend? You have it now. And you could have your your portable CD player with the anti-skip. Ooh, oh. skip protection. Yeah, skip protection. Damn, man. That, you ain't playing around. That was the high life. You're right. I feel like I was on cassette tapes, though. I was on cassette tapes for a long time. Yeah, because I felt like I was the coolest kid because I did have cassette tapes, Mm -hmm. but I had a way to record on them, like my favorite songs off of radio stations. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I felt so cool. I was the only one that felt that way, though. (laughs) (laughs) I do do remember road trips to Myrtle Beach and listening to one of two Weird Al tapes I had and then a Monty Python tape. Oh man, yeah. uh, Amish Paradise. <laughs> uh, no, that was the first CD I bought. I had, oh. I had, I had earlier tapes though. I don't. I'm trying so to remember some of like the earlier Weird ones. Al 3D. Yeah, yeah. Or, what was and the other one that he had? He's still alive, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's well, still touring. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you said absolutely. Like I felt like he lives a very risque life. He does not. <laughs> <Nah>. he's, really? <laughs> he's actually a vegetarian. Did you know that? I did not know we- that. Weird Al is probably one of the most clean cut and. You know, not wishing any ill upon him, but after he dies, he'll probably go down as another Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I know influence. nothing about Weird Al. <laughs> yeah. He, he's just like a super positive dude. Doesn't really get into like being gross or cursing or, you yeah. know. It but, is. Now that yeah. I think about it, it was yeah. always clean lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's a clean dude and he just leads a clean life. So, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Good on Weird Al. <laughs> <laughs> he who is tired of Weird Al is tired of life. <laughs> All right, then. So let's jump into the theme for this evening. 
the the theme is Adam has a crook in his back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Hop Nation top tip: don't get old. <laughs> that is actually the favorite part about my childhood is when my back didn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you guys remember when your back didn't hurt? Oh, uh, yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> How do you tweak your back putting down a, a, this soda? It was ten, <laughs> 10 years ago, you would hurt your back by, you know, playing sports, working out at the gym or something like that. <laughs> this is now bullshit. you wake up and your back hurts like all you did was sleep. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it so much. I need a beer. What, <laughs> what's, what's our theme so we can get to the beer? All right. So this week's theme is Pittsburgh Beer Fest. Ooh. Yes. I remember. Uh, you remember? I remember too. I was there. <laughs> so every beer this week is going to be a beer that was at Pittsburgh Beer Fest. Right on. Yes. Because you couldn't try them all. Couldn't try them all. And this one I actually didn't get to try, our first one here. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to try, and I don't even think I remember seeing the brewery there, but I didn't get all over. So I don't That's know. That's true. There was a lot of, a lot of breweries, a big pink elephant. There yeah. was a bunch of stuff going on there. A lot of things going on. Crawfish pies. All kinds oh, of stuff. Crawfish pies. We'll get into it in segment two. But for right now, now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I almost got that. Almost got. <laughs> tried, tried to come back into the ring swinging. It didn't, it didn't work. You sorry, <laughs> sorry, Apollo Creed. <laughs> That's a whiff. <laughs> Turns out I just hurt my back again. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> All right. So the first beer tonight is coming from a brewery that none of us have had before. It's CR Brewing out of Newcastle, PA. Hmm. Heard of them? Never had them. Yeah, so CR Brewing is relatively new. They opened up in, I think, 2017. Okay. Possibly 2018. They, they, they construction started on their addition because this is attached to the Crane Room Grill out of Newcastle. Hmm. That makes sense for a CR. Yeah. yeah that It all adds up. Yes. Uh, and they're relatively new. They don't have a huge uh, portfolio, I would say. Okay. Yeah. They don't have a huge portfolio at the moment. It's just like a Kolsch, an IPA. A red and a dippa. That's okay. Ooh, we have the dippa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Comes in at 8%. I picked up a crowler from JR's. Nice. That's how it goes. <laughs> should, should be tasty. So we'll see how it is. Let's uh, let's crack this bad boy open. So is there a name for this beer or is it just the... Dippa. The, it's the dippa. It's the dippa. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Dippa version one. Yeah. Information is very scant on any of their beers. It's just the style name. <laughs> Keeping that close to the cuff. Right. Since they're so new, who knows? They might be still playing around with it. Right. And uh, style name, ABV, and that's about all. <laughs> It'll what get was the ABV drunk. on this bad boy? Eight. Eight? Eight. Nice. Eight. Yeah, it's a dipper. Two-thirds of a snowman. Or just one snowman if you're lazy. <laughs> it's true. Snowman plus a nap. I mean, that's what, I mean, that's what you call it when you bowl in leagues. You call it a snowman. Hmm. Yeah. 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 I guess so. Well, you never bowled in a league, Adam, did you? Actually, I did. Oh, well, then why don't you know this? If you'll turn around, you'll see my bowling trophy. <laughs> eh, I might hurt my back. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Steve, always playing it careful. <laughs> so it looks like a dipper. It smells like a like a dipper. Well, it's. I think it smells a little zestier, a little fresher, because some of those dippers are a little bit malt forward. Yeah. This it's one just, doesn't smell malt I guess, no. I guess I'll just saw it I off ju- then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, take off. Fuck you. <laughs> ah, my back. <laughs> Damn it, Adam. <laughs> uh, it's pretty deep in color. Like it it's, is. Like, it's not amber. No, it's not a particularly vibrant looking beer. Yeah, but it's it like a deep orange. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look how it smells. No. No, it does. It, I, I'll <laughs> agree with you. It definitely smells like citrusy and fresh. That could just be the JR magic. <laughs> the magic of JR's <laughs> imparting citrus freshness into every beer. <laughs> I don't think that's how their crawler system works. <laughs> but it could. Drinks. Hmm. Nope. That's not your cup of tea, Adam. No. That, that might be used, I would guess, around like 75 to 85. They're a bit much. Like, I get it. <laughs> I know what they're going for. I get it. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> it's not for me. <laughs> Sometimes I'm craving this, so yeah, that punch in the face. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely like it, it's a real punch up front, but it's not. It's actually not too bad on the no. back end. I I would drink it. I agree with that. In that it doesn't have that lingering. Yeah, right. It it gets out of the way. 
Yeah. Where your tongue feels like it's in shock. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, what's going on? <laughs> okay, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, it's also it's also not like really dry. It, it just kind of terminates. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I do appreciate that. Yeah. This isn't what you would call a juicy brew. Correct. But at the same time, it's not one of those harsh, dry IPAs either. Mm-hmm. It doesn't even approach a brute. Yeah. It's no. see- yeah. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> it, it seems okay. It seems like CR Brewing has done all right. I'll have they, they've one. made it through the first <laughs> test. <laughs> <laughs> well, they made it through two tests. Right. I didn't like it. Well, <laughs> which means it could be a very good IPA. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, I, I guess that means he, they made it through the test of is it a actual regular dipper? And not just like some goofy ass milkshake or something else. Right. Right. You know how like Decadent does where they call things Dippa, but it tastes like marshmallows and unicorn Oh parts. yeah, they just pour, <laughs> it's 75% lactose. Yeah. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that, because I do enough. drink those beers heavy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but this is much more just kind of a classic Dippa. Mm-hmm. No bells and whistles. It's, it's just straight up. And Here's I, hops. Suck it up, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so I still get something a little different out of it. It looks like it, on the appearance it should be malt heavy. Mm-hmm. On the nose, it's just zesty and fresh. But taste, it still tastes fresh, full of hops. But it tastes heavy. But it's not from the malt. I don't. I don't know. I'm confused. It's good. I will have another one. Yeah. They, there might be like a little bit of lactose mm-hmm. that gives it that heaviness. Because you, you taste yeah. it too, Steve? Yeah, There's no, I, going I do. On in yeah, there. There is, it does have like a thick mouthfeel to it. Hmm. But like you said, it's not uh, malty to suggest that the, right. mal- the, that the malts are balanced because the malts obviously aren't balancing out the hop because right. the hop is it's all hop. forward. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's all hop. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There could be there could be <laughs> right. some lactose in there just make, you know thickening it up. We should reach out to them. We have social media. It'll go up. Maybe somebody will see something. <laughs> Whoever CR is. Whoever CRB. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever CRB, that's right. <laughs> CR dot 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 BRB. <laughs> LOL. That's for all you kids out there that used to use AIM. <laughs> so I feel that if, if this doesn't have a name, we should just give them the name of Here's Hops. Suck it up, bitch. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if they I don't know if they want to use the bitch, but you know No, it's fine. Yeah. That's yeah, fine. no, they that's, can if they that's want. what craft beer is all about. Yeah, yeah. What was that one thing with the chocolate? Oh, with the, with the, the baby, baby doll? doll? Yeah, with the God. baby doll getting the chocolate fountain farted in its face. Yeah, that was, I couldn't look away. Check it out on Instagram. literally a train wreck. <laughs> it's our most watched video on Instagram. It's hilarious. <laughs> Check it out. Please tell me you're joking. No, no, no. no absolutely not. <laughs> How many watches? <laughs> like 300 plus. Yeah, I think I was at least 15 of them because I yeah. couldn't understand why I was seeing. <laughs> and for about the first 10, I didn't understand how it was getting to the baby doll. And then when I did, I immediately closed the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Because we were on our business Twitter, I was like, "No, I can't like retweet this." <laughs> oh, see, well, you're see, you were on Twitter. You weren't even on Instagram, hmm. so that means none of those views counted. Oh, so you get on Instagram yeah. and watch it another fifteen times. Yeah. Oh, now that I know how it works, <laughs> that is a waste of chocolate. Like no one ate that after that. You don't know that. I feel like I. D- but to be fair, if you're doing that onto a baby doll, you probably also ate the chocolate. You, yeah, this could be like a Dane Cook skit. Who shit on the coats? <laughs> like, who shit on the coats? Who farted in the chocolate fountain? Okay. <laughs> and got it over my little sister's cabbage patch kid. <laughs> this is getting out of hand. It's a mystery. <laughs> I don't know. We're just talking about our Instagram, at Hop Nation uh, USA. <laughs> Buy our shirts at tpublic.com. Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting for when that was going to make its Buy appearance. <laughs> Didn't I'll, even make it 20 minutes. I wasn't able to design a new shirt this week. My power went out. <laughs> that is accurate. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> All right. I guess we can move away from talking about that. Thank if it would make you. you happy, Adam. It makes me not unhappy. <laughs> we are joined by Dennis this week. Come on, Sass. With the, uh, I, I want to call him the traitor. No. Well, it depends on the uh, on the spelling. I I, <laughs> I prefer ambassador ah, or like or that. liaison. Nice liaison. to the multimedia world. Liaison to other podcasts. Uh, but to be fair, when, I, when <laughs> some of them that I have one on, I have given you guys shout outs. That's fair. We appreciate yeah, that's fair. that. He did give us a shout out on the working stiffs. I did that. Yeah. 
It, it, and honestly, if you want to get me to listen to your podcast, have Dennis on and I'll listen. <laughs> yeah. hey, it's worked pretty much every single time. Yeah, yeah I actually listen. So. <laughs> we'll whore them out to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be your bottom bitch. <laughs> <laughs> if you want me to listen to your podcast. <laughs> but yeah, you, you're, you're having a big week. You, you were on Working Stiffs two weeks ago. Yes, sir. And you were on Drinking Partners earlier this week. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. So unfortunately, we don't get the scoop, but you do have some news about First Sip Brew Box. Yes. So over the past couple weeks, we actually um, released our pre-orders for our pet brew box. It is the first in the U.S. and may even be the first in the world. I'm just not that up to date on some of those other countries out there. So as far as what we do over the past year, my wife and I, uh, Sammy, um, we've been playing with a little puppy porter and we were thinking, what else can we do out there? You know, we already differentiated, differentiated ourselves in the craft beer world. Um, doing what we do at First Sip Brew Box. So now we took it one step further and we actually partner with breweries all over the country and small businesses that make treats for your dog out of craft beer ingredients and items from spent grain treats to chicken ale all kinds of really cool stuff and we're looking at doing it for other pets too probably just cats i don't know what you do with other pets i don't know if there's hot <laughs> flakes for goldfish or not or anything like that uh, we're maybe focusing some sort on of, <laughs> something maybe like one maybe like a jingle bell toy that's full of catnip, but it's like yeah. shaped like a hop. Oh, Absolutely. I Nobody mean, steal that. I'll find Cats you. are Sorry, picky, though. Pending. You know, but uh, right now we have it on pre order. Check out First Sip Brew Box, our Facebook page, our Instagram page. Um, we have links there to pre order it. Uh, we're going to be releasing it this spring. We're looking at partnering with charities all over the country that make, you know, dog toys and everything like that and collaborating with the different breweries. But the really good stuff, our big mantra is uh, you never drink alone when you drink with your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Damn we, straight. We, we have a chicken ale that you could pour for your pup as you're dipping into, you know, a dip uh, or a chocolate stout or whatever have you. So it's definitely a lot of really cool, fun stuff. And we found out that people actually love their pets more than other humans. So we yeah. wanted to give them something yeah. to share with their dogs. That's not hard to figure <laughs> <No>. out. Yeah. <laughs> so is there is there a name for the separate line or is it? It's just our uh, first set pet brew box. Okay. That's it, baby. Right on. Keep it simple. So if I want to give a little tip to the world, yeah, your best way to serve the chicken ale for your dog is probably going to be a goblet. Ooh. It's open at the top, but it's very bowlish. That's true. Yeah. Or you can just get the bowl from that other brewery. <laughs> How did I know you're going to say that? <laughs> the back channel brewery. Those are for those bougie pups yeah. out there. You for know. the bougie pups, you just get a back channel <laughs> bowl. <laughs> Dewclaw's out, boys. We fancy. Yeah. What You'd a, think Dewclaw would have a beer for dogs. I know, right? Yeah. I think BrewDog does. Have you checked into that? So I'm actually, I just reached out to their head accountant over in the UK and he helped me get a hold of the CEO here in the US so we could do some partnerships there. Mm -hmm. um, but for thanking him for getting a hold of us and everything, we're sending him a brew box nice. to the right. brewery, nice. which is super cool. So he's going to tell everyone about it, which we're excited about. But the North American CEO, T, she's actually going to be a part of uh, Fresh Fest this year, which mm -hmm. is yep. really awesome. So I'm going to meet her in person there and I'm going to be reaching out with her. So if she happens to listen to the Hop Nation USA podcast, look out for my email because you's going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully she listens because we did mention her back in episode ninety four when we Ooh. did it. We did a whole brew dog episode. Oh man, that's awesome! Yeah, so we we did mention her and her being at Fresh Fest. So hopefully Good. she's still on the train. Yeah, maybe. Knows, I don't know. Man. Maybe boo. Uh, she might. <laughs> Come she on. might be. Come on. Either way, I'm gonna be reaching out to you, girl. <laughs> trying to get in touch with you guys to do some cool stuff with uh, the new hotel that you guys have going on and tying our pet brew box in on it. Which brings up an interesting question. Yeah. Is that hotel pet friendly? Ooh. I mm. You know, hard to say because it is also a brewery. It is. I can see I it going but both ways. Yeah, but they don't serve food. Right. So. Good question. They should, they should give us a room and we'll find out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have access to a dog. Yeah. You don't? Or you no, do? I do. Oh, I oh, okay, do. Cool. Give us yeah. your dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you wait, you were talking about my dog. <laughs> no, but I'll take more than one dog. I don't dogs. mind. Oh, okay. yeah. We'll hang out with dogs. I'm it's actually cool. upset you don't have a dog, Adam. <laughs> I, you know, let's not get into that conversation. All right, that, he doesn't have a dog yet. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I know what that means. I'm going to keep quiet, though. Thank you. <laughs> cool. That, uh, I want a dog. <laughs> of course you want a dog. Dogs are awesome. 
Yeah, I'll let's get a dog and then get a pet brew box. That's it. <laughs> what if I do it the other way around? Maybe I just want to support Dennis. You Screw can, you. Is it, to I be don't fair, care. these can... treats smell and look so good. I've been so close. I'm, I'm just sure. biting into them. They're, I'm sure they're perfectly fine they're for right. you. I, don't, I think they all have to be fit for human consumption. That's cool, though. Maybe one day, as uh, you check into your room at the doghouse, you'll find a, a first set brew box on your pillow and a pet brew box at the foot of the bed. Shit, yeah. 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 So on that topic, just to segue a little bit, if any of you uh, guys and girls out there are listening that own your own business or someone knows someone that does, we actually just launched our um, brew box for business. So we're doing corporate gifting. So we'll actually personalize it with any messages that you want, any business cards, anything uh, for you that you want to send out to any clients that you want to land or trying to land or customers you just want to thank for supporting your small business we'll do brew uh first hit brew box for business and personalize it and send it out to them differentiate yourself from all your competition out there with beer gear word that's a good it's a good pitch it, I, there's nothing else to it it's nah, exactly pitch. i can't <laughs> add on <laughs> it. Uh, you friggin nailed it yeah oh good i don't remember you got anything. that one yeah, <laughs> sure i was you a seizure you practice that at home <laughs> no i don't practice honestly i just i just beer. blanked out and i got it <laughs> yeah, I <did. laughs> oh, how'd i get here oh it's good oh okay <laughs> <laughs> this this isn't my house. <laughs> he just has copy written on the uh, inside of his eyelids. He sorry. just reads copy and then... <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Adam. I thought that was a bathroom. <laughs> it was a closet. <laughs> Listen, at least it was that closet and not the other closet that's carpeted. So we're okay. Yeah. That's where you're wrong. And he, and he still nailed the copy. So <laughs> I, I went twice. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> That's not nice at all. It was not a fountain. <laughs> Gross. Very much so. So what do you have to say, there, Steve? I got a news. Okay. I got a news. Okay. It's uh it's uh it's about home brewing. It's home brewing news. I like that. Yeah, I like that too. So the American Home Brewer Association has announced where the forty first annual homebrew convention is going to be at. Can I guess? Yeah, you can guess. I don't care. Nashville. No. Canton. No. Des Moines. No. Denver. You're actually going to feel stupid when I say it because it's a place that you like. What does Adam like? Well, it can't all fit in my living room. So. Aldi's. <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, it might be able to fit in your living room. Oh, all right. Where at? Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> oh, I like Providence, Rhode Island. <laughs> See, I, know. I know you like Rhode Island. <laughs> Steve knows you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it, which is kind of ironic because if you'll notice the shirt that I'm wearing. Right. You're wearing a new port storm right now. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> it's a Rhode Island brewery. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Small Neat. world. Yeah. Small state. Yeah, biggest uh, little state in the union. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, man. yeah. But it, now it's getting the biggest home brewing event of the year, and that's within driving distance from us. Like that's doable. Eight hours, more or less. Yeah, yeah, you could do it. Yeah, anything less than twelve hours, I'll do. Yeah, you can <laughs> just stop. Just stop in Connecticut. Grab yourself a Dunkin' Donuts. Get your rest of the way. You're fine. Doos. There's some good diners in Connecticut. It's true. Swing into West Hartford. See my childhood friend. Grab a diner meal. Keep going. Grab I'll some blue plate. Stop at a Stewart's gas station. Get some uh, Stewart's pop. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that more of a New Jersey thing? I, they're kind of all over. All right. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I know when I was working out of uh, Middleton, New York, I was doing some work in and out of Connecticut as well. Right on. Mm. So, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> when is the home brewing? What's it? Who's it? Oh, you want to know more? <laughs> I do. <laughs> I need to start planning a vacation. Are you not entertained? <laughs> so, the, uh, the, the event itself is June 27th to June 29th. Which is strangely a Thursday to Saturday. That is weird. That is weird. I, I guess they're assuming that Sunday's a travel day for everybody. I guess so. But screw everybody coming in. Right. <laughs> screw, <laughs> screw people on the week. I don't know. You got to take, take off on a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, take a Wednesday off and then you get back home on Sunday. Weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have to be an AHA member to be a part of it, though. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, hmm. And uh, we do have a sign-up discount Yes, for people who want to become AHA members. Aha. Uh -huh. We'll put that up on the social medias. Aha. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Aha. Ha -ha. Promote, promote. Uh -huh. <laughs> so does that include um, entry? Do you also pay for tickets and all that stuff? I believe uh, none of that was announced yet. You can pre-register because okay. it also depends on what capacity you're going because you can enter the homebrew competition. So, so there's going to be a big giant homebrew competition for mm. beer and mead and cider, but there's also uh, a number of sessions to just visit and listen to. 
the key uh, the keynote speaker is uh, dan Kleblan of maine beer company oh wow so he'll be giving the big main speech and then there i think <laughs> the main speech <laughs> i know <laughs> ha 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 <laughs> nice uh but he'll be yeah and then there's a number of other speeches and presentations for you to enjoy right on hmm. for your home brewing goodness what month is this june 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 mm, registration like opens march 13th i so. might try to slide into the dms and get first sip in there that's a good beer by the way i don't know if you had that oh no i didn't so know it was a thing. DMs i thought it was just like my evil pre wife oh. tactics of getting a hold of women <laughs> well it's a beer now too <laughs> <laughs> i uh, was much more successful with that one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll just bring it right to the table. It's you're, fine. You're, <laughs> they're doing all right, Adam. <laughs> you do okay. <laughs> I, haven't had, I haven't had slide into the DMs, but I did have new phone who dis. I haven't had that one yet. That one's good. Yeah. Is that Evil Genius? Who it's also that? Evil Genius. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you're we're just so on Evil up Genius. On their talk. Pop culture. Yeah. yeah. You're so good. <laughs> we're just on Evil Genius talk at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> they make good beers. Go try them. Yeah. Luke runs a good ship over there. Yeah. Um, I also just had a uh, beer from the main beer company. Uh, the King Titus Porter. Oh, Ooh. okay. That's that just sounds good. That it sounds is. delicious. It's, it's it's a very solid. It's just a very solid, straightforward porter. Right on. Did you get it from Jr's? No, I had it at the Eagle. Oh, the Eagle. Yeah. <laughs> I, while my power was out, I went and had drinks at the Giant Eagle <laughs> <laughs> with the rest of the soccer moms. Yeah. What the hell else am I gonna do? <laughs> I don't have electricity. Guess I go drink at a grocery. You can't even store. buy milk at that point. You could buy no refrigerated items. Exactly. Well, you yeah. could. It would just be pointless. Yeah, just stupid. <laughs> you got, Depends on how much you like milk. <laughs> right. You're also, like, taking a gamble. Because it's like, true. I could buy milk now and hope that power comes back <laughs> <laughs> in time for it to not spoil. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> just hit that nice Did you up. have a bunch of stuff go bad on you? No. Mm. No, I didn't have a bunch of stuff go bad. There's a general rule of don't open the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you just actually kept... Man. Yeah. I always, it was probably a behavior from my childhood. I go in there and I look just to see if anything else popped up. Yeah. Like I, I had a, I had some stuff in there. Like I had some uh, seltzer waters mm. and I just pulled them all out because I knew I was going to drink them. Right. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so smart. It's like you plan ahead, man. Yeah. Yep. And then I just keep the door shut. It's like, you know what to do when <laughs> shit hits the fan. <laughs> well, I've been living in a damn country for most of my damn life. And yeah. Everything like a dog farts near the power lines and everything goes out. <laughs> On that so. note, for all the listeners <laughs> out there, if you do not have yourself a country friend, you need to find yourself one because <laughs> when shit hits the fan, just like it happens happened here you need to figure it out and hook up with them <laughs> maybe <laughs> so that that's my that's my news right on i don't think i have yeah it's at the uh, rhode island conference convention center okay yeah that's probably the biggest uh craft beer event that's ever hit rhode island very possible <laughs> <laughs> it's at least the biggest homebrew event <laughs> so there you go and yeah homebrew competition if somebody would give us money We'll enter it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you do is just steal some of Tom's beers. It doesn't matter which ones. Oh, yeah. Tom can enter, too. No, yeah. we'll, we'll just like, Tom, give us three beers. <laughs> it doesn't matter which ones. <laughs> we should run like a little uh, donate campaign and just do a collaboration between out there? our yeah. companies. <laughs> no, no, we could do something. I'm I telling know, yeah, you. Yeah. Well, we got brewing downstairs may actually... Well, that's that's for something. What's brewing downstairs for something else? More to come on that. That's right. Yeah. Well, that could be version one. No yeah. spoilers. That's no spoilers. V1. No spoilers. I know. That's, that's why I'm saying V one. Else. There ain't no spoilers. That's something else. With letters and numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's let's talk about beer, a beer we can talk about. The Crane Room Dippa, also known as the CRB Dippa, also known as Hop Suck It Up Bitch, <laughs> also known as Steve's. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's the can. It's from Steve's. <laughs> Now, if anyone's keeping notes out there, they're just confused. <laughs> they're totally confused, especially because that conversation we had that you're referencing was off mic. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm just helping their ESP a little bit. That's that's all. good. <laughs> if you if you're hearing bonus material that isn't a part of the show, you know, seek help or don't. I don't care. <laughs> just, Not your don't, doctor. <laughs> just don't rob us. That's yeah. the important thing. <laughs> Not your doctor. Do what you want. As so, long as you're having a good time. <laughs> so I did notice that uh, you guys went back to the crowler multiple times here. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. So uh, that's we don't live the fuggle life. That, I, I like low <laughs> alphas. Low alphas is low where alpha. it's at. <laughs> no bitch. No bitch. No fuggle. No fuggles, bitch. baby. So it it that to me was a good sign that you guys enjoyed this beer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's generally inoffensive. 
speaking from our perspective, yes. I would say. Yes. Uh, that, yeah, it's just a straight down the middle double IPA. And, and that's what I, I kind of respect on this one is they didn't try to pull a gimmick. Yeah. There are very that's good true. gimmicky beers out there. I love me a good gimmick once in a while. Yeah. But this this one was a straight shooter. So, I mean, I guess if you if if you respect the fact that, you know, this was kind of normally made, <laughs> it, it right. was made normal. Right. right. <laughs> that maybe, Adam, you would probably like, you know, the Irish Red, if it's still same quality. Right. Or the Kolsch. Hmm. Or I, I don't know if I mentioned it at the top of the sh- show, but um, they have something called a bourbon Kolsch. A bourbon Kolsch? Yeah. Bourbon uh, or bourbon? Bourbon. Not okay. bourbon. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> I know we're bourbon right now, but... We'll no, I saw it. My mom was like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. No, it's a bourbon Kolsch, but there's no information. I can't tell you if it's like just barrel aged or what. So. I just have to go there. <laughs> yeah, just you go. haven't had that one, Steve? No. Okay. No, this is the only one I've had. The oh, Dippa. damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, I want that bourbon Kolsch. Well, yeah. then, looks like I'm going to Newcastle. Yeah. And that's not Check that it out. far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, it's really not. It's a hop, skim, and a jump. Yeah. You can go there on your way to Vintage. vintage. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's our, that's our weekly Vintage plug that we don't get paid for. They don't give us any attention for. <laughs> but they're doing a lot for the craft beer community. Oh, bringing absolutely. Stuff that yeah. is so hard to get. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we just talk about Vintage and JRs all the time. They never give us any money. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> See, you just show up like, you got my check? <laughs> yeah, it's my check. You know you're, we're an internationally known podcast, right? We talk to people in Brazil. You're a big dude. That can go one of either way. It's either the police are being called or they're legitimately giving you a check. <laughs> I don't know. The guy, the owner of JRs is pretty big. Oh, really? Yeah, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's pretty big and he's got a staff. So, damn. <laughs> All right. Well, vintage it is. <laughs> Not a staff like a ninja, but like he has a number of. Employees. Well, you don't know. You've never been no, in the back. He office. might have that too. I don't know. Well, I assumed he wasn't a wizard plus four. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But back to the beer. Um, my thoughts. Uh, like I said earlier, looks malty, smells fresh and citrusy and zesty. It tastes very well balanced. It's actually, like you guys were saying, it's a straight shooter to uh, the type of beer it is, but it's actually refreshing in the fact that it just doesn't dump a bunch of adjuncts, um, lactose, like all that stuff in there. It's just a good, well-rounded beer. Yeah. We've all forgotten what a classic Dippa right. is. That's true. I didn't hey. like it for all the right reasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sniff test. If Adam hates it, but you like uh, IBUs, you'll like it. Mm-hmm. So what do you say? We take a quick break? Yes. Continue to not get paid? Yes. And then come back for segment two. First Sip Brew Box is a -a one-of-a-kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including t-shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at firstsipbrewbox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at firstsipbrewbox.com. Dot com. Welcome back to episode 96 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. It's me, Andre the Giant, everybody. <laughs> everybody loves Andre. <laughs> so timid. So timid. Timid Andre. <laughs> <laughs> T.A. for short. For that story, Spy. Did you know the A in ASMR stands for Andre? <laughs> <laughs> Wrong with you. I had a dippa in the first segment. (laughs) It was true. Pretty strong, and we had a crowler of it. Mad dippers. Yeah, that's what's wrong with me currently. Me and Steve had to crush that. (laughs) Yeah, we had to get rid of it because somebody else doesn't like it. (laughs) That would be me. It was too much. Good thing I'm equipped just for such a challenge. Yeah. All right, Adam. Okay. You're up. What is the second beer that was featured at Pittsburgh Beer Fest. So the second beer that we'll be having uh, on this episode that was at the Pittsburgh Craft Beer Fest was, is the Victory Twisted Monkey. Uh-huh. It is a Belgian-style blonde ale Ooh. with mango. Neat. Yes. Tasty. Yes. 5% ABV. Uh, no idea on the IBUs. Uh, they're considering it a blonde ale, but it kind of bleeds into the Belgian blonde. Belgian blonde there wit mango. Well. Yes. Huh. Yes. So it, uh, it's going to have a lot of mango flavor, I hope. Hopefully. Yes. And this is part of the uh, the monkey family at Victory. Victory has the sour monkey, the gold monkey, the white monkey. The, the funky one. monkey. The funky monkey. They got all those monkeys. So uh, I'm looking forward to this Basically one. a zoo over there. Yeah. I haven't had a bad one yet. Do they have a brass monkey? 
No. Brass Good. monkey. Because yeah. I don't like the Beastie Boys. <laughs> they should at least I'm call sorry. one a funky monkey. <laughs> oh, they have one of those. Yeah, they do have a funky monkey. Do they? But you would think if they're going to have a funky monkey, they'd also have a brass monkey. Hmm. And then they sell it in a variety pack with just the golden monkey. But you have to drink the brass monkey first, and then you're a funky monkey. Mm-hmm. That makes complete sense. Yes. I'm down with that. Victory. Hire me for marketing. Get at us. <laughs> but mainly Steve. Yeah. Just get at me for marketing. <laughs> Who else wants to get at me for marketing? Everybody. Everybody should. Everybody get Steve. You get a Steve and you get a Steve. <laughs> I got a beer. <laughs> yes, you do. It's a blonde ale. Oh, very... I smell the Belgian. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's I... the yeasty yeasts up top. This is a lot paler than what we had. Oh, really? Previously. Oh, 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 last oh, segment, oh yeah. okay. I thought you were talking about a beer fest. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like, well, I only remember no, no, 63% no, no, no. of it. So <laughs> no, 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 I would have to refer to your judgment, Steve. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm saying just last segment, this is, this is a lot paler. This is just a very light straw color. Mm-hmm. And uh, not much head. It definitely looks like a back porch kind of beer. Mm-hmm. Or it could also just be a Belgian. It could also just be a Belgian. It could be one or the other. Listen, we're not here to judge. You don't have a porch, Adam, okay? <laughs> no, be, Adam, we are here to judge. You'd be an inner city kid, no porch. <laughs> You'd just be a stoop kid. <laughs> a stoop kid's afraid to leave the stoop. <laughs> Adam, you're also wrong. We are here to judge. That's uh, actually, yeah, you're right. Kind of the are. name of the game on the show. <laughs> That's true. Steve's got you there. <laughs> it, Fair point. It legitimately ends in a medal contest. <laughs> <laughs> to the death. Well, yeah. Damn it, Steve, you make my chest hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't let him sit on you. <laughs> don't let him bully you. Tell people. <laughs> that was so good. Adam, I know he was just being a nice guy. <laughs> Steve brought it back to reality real quick. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, what's that term? Uh, esters? Esters? Yeah, sure. Esters. Yeah. Fruity esters. Belgian-y? Smell a lot of those fruity esters. I smell mango funk is what I'm going to go with. Mm, I like it. I'd wear a cologne <laughs> called mango funk, to be honest. <laughs> I, I'd use a body wash called that. Mm, same here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, marketing well, is our thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's get at us. <laughs> we, we are all consultants under the same agency. <laughs> I, I, I feel like Suave is more of a mango funk. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like Old Spice is a lot more adventurous. They're like Denali. <laughs> and they have Terry Crews like yeah. throwing children in the air and suplexing them. Yeah. <laughs> and then his brain comes out of his head and it yeah. explodes and it's screams insane. at him. And yeah. Those commercials have gotten out of control. <laughs> yeah. I still like their deodorant though. Oh, yeah. Until I found stuff. this new hop deodorant. <laughs> Until you found the new hop deodorant. <laughs> oh, it's so good, man. Hop plus cedar wood. It's so. Oh, God. I feel like I'm running through a forest naked. Where can you get this again? Uh, first at Brewbox. Oh, okay. Dot com. We, we've got, we've got <laughs> this. Check them out. <laughs> All right, let's get this beer. All right, get in on it. Ooh. That's interesting. That's, so they called their shot on the mango. Yeah, I, I, I you actually did want it. there to be a lot. They you wanted it. it. Yeah. I actually tasted it. Mango, I usually find, is one of the hardest flavors to get in there mm. and get in there properly. Like, I think it's up there with strawberry that it's usually super right. faint and I don't right. taste it. Apple is another one. Apple could be better. Well, apple is also an off flavor of like the chemical reactions mm. in beer. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you might get apple and you weren't even going for it, but right. you just rename that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, it's all in the marketing. <laughs> also, a lot of times people just throw in cinnamon and you're like, it's apple cinnamon. And it's like, mm, maybe. <laughs> Steve's <laughs> like, mm, is it though? Is it though? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, there's definitely mango in this. Oh, yeah, there's. Uh, t- it's weird. I'm sorry. So you get the the esters, the Belgian on the nose. Mm. Then when you dip in, you you get a slight like blonde Belgian taste, and then it, you just get hammered with the mango. Yeah, yeah. It's it it's almost to the point of it. It I don't want to say fake tasting. Mm. Oh, but, like an extract type deal. Yeah, like, um, yeah. Which could, I mean, tons of breweries use extract. It's a good possibility. I don't know. I kind of got that vibe to it, but I don't. I don't think that's it. Yeah, I I, I kind of know what you're saying. I think it might be the mix of just kind of the Belgian Maybe. nature of it, mm. and then mixing with the mango, it becomes a little artificial because mm. it, there's just so much up front. Right. But then for me. It tapers off into just kind of a regular Belgian on the back end. Hmm. Yes. I don't yeah. think I ever get to the back it, end. It, it almost seems like there is a, a portion of it where it almost tastes sugary sweet. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's 
And, and, and I think that's what's tricking me into yeah. the, the fakeness or fake taste, which isn't there. But it it just it's super sweet, super sugary. Yeah, it, right? it really is really sweet. Mm. Not yeah, it just mm. this is not a chugger. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also because you're thinking like this is supposed to be a Belgian, and Belgians usually aren't like super sweet like that. Right. Right. And this is. And they yeah. brought that up. Yeah, that, that, maybe it's kind of like fine. the David Blaine of beers. It's just a mind fuck. <laughs> it really just, it's not what you expect when you start going into it. Jeez, you know, <laughs> yeah, The mind card fuck. was in the bottle in the sewer at my house? <laughs> you get away from me, devil man. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was a good, oh man, David Blaine parodies are awesome. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so how can they find that video, Steve? I don't even remember what it was called. Oh, I don't know. Just look up David Blaine parody. Yeah, David Blaine parody. There's like four volumes of it. Oh, so good, yeah. so funny. Yeah. Watch that and pause the podcast. Watch that. Come back. <laughs> come back. <laughs> I want you to us. enjoy this in real time. <laughs> You'll be with us. How did I get up here? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about things. Talk about things and stuff and stuff. Yeah. So we're we're doing the theme of Pittsburgh Beer Fest beers, and that's because one, it just happened, and two, Dennis and I were there. Yep. Super fresh. Mm. Dennis was there for both sessions. He you know is a nice vendor. He Ooh, hangs yes. out. He sells his wares. My I showed Khajiit up one to help off of Morrowind and <laughs> Skyrim. <laughs> Slinging brew boxes. And I was a bum and didn't show up at all. Well, that's eh, fine. <laughs> it's we still okay. love you. It's okay. <laughs> Sorry. What we wanted to talk about, though, is at least what I wanted to talk about is it's been a couple years since I've been to Pittsburgh Beer Fest. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to bring this up because right now Fresh Fest is in the running for one of the top beer fests in the country. Yes. Uh, you can vote on that on USA Today. Talk uh this this one Pittsburgh Beer Fest, I might put in the bottom ten. <laughs> All right then, it was not good. It, like I stopped going to it because it wasn't great. Right, and then after seeing this one, it got worse. It's worse. And being Yeesh. on being on the vendor side and helping out with Dennis and First Set Brew Box is a different perspective as well. Right, yeah. but wow. <laughs> And I think one of the things that I definitely point out, it's a matter of perspective. What I, I definitely agree. It's becoming a lot more distributor driven, less uh, brewery rep like Mm -hmm. representative. Um, But what I definitely noticed this year over the last, we've been going to these events for the last five years. um, There's more people that have no idea what craft beer is now coming out which is really exciting it's good for the industry it's good for the scene for sure um but i definitely agree with steve in the fact that they have to step it up with more more interesting beers from the breweries like a lot of the breweries are there i know that they have a lot better stuff now i don't mm-hmm. know if it was a distribution issue or yeah. anything along those lines um and just having more brewery reps just actually come yeah. out that can share what they're about because honestly it's what a lot of people that's what a lot of veterans in the industry want they want to go out there they want to talk to the owners to you know someone that works at the brewery nothing against the volunteers a lot of them were absolutely great and i'm happy there was no long lines yeah. which you run into a lot of uh, beer festivals. Um, so that part of it's phenomenal, but you can't have a meaningful conversation. The folks that are there volunteering their time, they're just ready for their break to go back out and have more beers on, mm. on their own. Right. And and that's what is especially sad because, you know, when we go to like Beers of the Berg and Brutal and Fresh Fest, mm-hmm. there are actual representatives yes. right? from the breweries. And then you get to talk to them and you get mm-hmm. to talk about how was this beer made? How, you know, what went into it? Right. What was the inspiration? Yada, yada, yada. Whatever you want to talk shop about. Mm-hmm. You can't do that at this festival anymore. Well, I think part of that is because there are so many festivals nowadays. Right. right? I mean, there's a festival every weekend. Right. It seems like nowadays. That's true. And I know because my calendar's booked. <laughs> See, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and Dennis, you're you're the perfect person to have on the show for this conversation mm-hmm. because you you give us that insight from you know the vendor side of things. Absolutely, and, and I'm sure you guys I, are are turning down opportunities simply because you already booked that far ahead. I mean, we got rent to pay, Adam. I'll hire people <laughs> and have them go. <laughs> I'm trying not to be homeless. It's still cold outside. But but what I mean, okay, that I, that I'll put it another way. You you are not wanting for opportunity correct 
Yeah, ab- absolutely. We just actually, perfect time to bring this up. We had a beer fest reach out to us. Uh, Beers on the Bay, I believe they're called, up in Erie. Okay. They're oh, okay. having one this June, which is really exciting. So we hung out with um, some of the Erie Brewing guys and got to, you know, talk to them a little bit, try some of their beers at the beer fest. And they took my card and true to his word, he handed it off to them because they're sponsoring that event. So I'm starting to see a theme. If a lot all these beer fests are really backed and supported by a lot of local breweries it's going mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. phenomenal um so the ones that we prioritize over a lot of them or are they brewery backed and sponsored the actual small brewery back them sponsored and do they have a legitimate cause with brewery support mm-hmm. yeah. if they have that they're going to be a phenomenal brewery because it's going to be that that big theme with the small city feel small right. town feel and that's the best thing about a lot of these beer fests and it seems like those are the beer fests where the breweries that come are going to come with a beer to flex their muscles a little yep. bit they may have even brewed it just for that event right they're which is they, really exciting they need cool. something to stand out Mm -hmm. Uh, amongst all the, you know, amongst all the tall trees, they need to bring, you know, a bigger tree. Yeah, Yeah. that's true. Bring a big tree to stand out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's the exact opposite of what's happening at Pittsburgh Beer Fest. Right. And I'm sure tons of beer festivals across the country. I think one of the things for you guys to look into when deciding what beer fest to go to, um, look who's running it. Mm -hmm. Is it a big marketing company that's putting this together that could be a potential cash grab? And, you know, the website might not line up with what's actually going to be there and so on and so forth. Or is it for a cause in your local community backed by small breweries? Yeah. If it's that and you have the decision between the two, pick the latter yeah. for sure. So a perfect example of that was last summer yeah. when there was a decision oh. to be made. Oh. You know which one I'm talking <laughs> oh, yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, actually makes my belly hurt. And, and <laughs> you guys made the correct decision. Yeah. And you guys went to Fresh Fest. Yeah. We sure did. We went to Fresh Fest because... Fresh was working. Fest. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, so you, we were oh, you, know, you know the... Uh, <laughs> he knows the tagline. Fresh Fest. <laughs> Boy, I got you. Don't worry. Ed, Ed Hands Bailey, baby. He'd be coming out of nowhere. <laughs> Those guys are silly. <laughs> but you guys went there, had yourself a hell of a time. Oh, mm-hmm. sure and, did. and that's all I heard about for weeks on end. We had a hell of a time in the fun sense. You went to All Star mm-hmm. and had a hell of a time mm-hmm. in the Which, bad again, sense. <laughs> it lines up perfectly with exactly what we're talking about. Right. A big corporation that came from out of town that threw together everything they thought that would make a perfect marketing tagline and Mm -hmm. over promise under delivered to all the constituents we had tons of people going to the pnc event and then they came right over the Fresh Fest. Right. Fresh Fest got so busy. Uh, Ed and Day, they were going around. We were finding cups. We were going to breweries. They were using plastic cups, cups at one point. It yeah. was a Red Solo <laughs> Cup approved uh, beer fest. It yeah. was just insane, the camaraderie. Um, and Steve could attest to this because I know at that event, he definitely had a, quite a few brews. There were <laughs> so many local yes. things that he never had before, which was really exciting. Well, yeah, because there were specific collaboration beers. I yeah. mean, I mean that's always one of my big harp ons as far as things that I really love about beer fest is if you brew something specifically for that festival that I can't get anywhere else, that entices me to come right. out and Ooh, check out what you did. I gotta yep. try Steve this. Steve gonna be yeah. there. Yeah, that that's worth my ticket price. Right. Going to Pittsburgh Beer Fest and going had it, had it, had it, had it. Oh, and he said that a Don't lot. We're it. walking mm-hmm. around and yeah. uh, me being a silly boy, <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> "Ooh, I like that style. That's good." Dennis to my was body. just drinking a drink because <laughs> oh, he was there, <laughs> which is which is which is a fine approach. Yeah, you know, you don't have to have a new beer every single time. You right. could go back to and, right. and drink your favorites. Oh, oh yeah. I was seeing that's perfectly like, fine favorite beers I haven't had in like a couple years. Right, and I was in there like swimwear. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I I haven't had a Luau Crunkle in a while, mm-hmm. but it was there and I had some. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you had the Big Bad Baptist. Yeah, right. I haven't had that in a while mm-hmm. either, but I was able to get it. Uh, but I only got that because it goes against what was on the website. I know because they said uh, they had the quad. Point. They had perfect the quad Baptist. Point. They didn't. I I will say the one thing that I do like about Pittsburgh Beer Fest is the connoisseur area. Mm-hmm. Oh man! But I don't know if I can justify the ticket price. But you can if you come with first sip. I can if I <laughs> I can if I'm a vendor. I can just like, slide right in. <laughs> so there's good food in there, and there's a lot of good beer in there. Crawfish pies. The one thing I do like about the the Winter Beer Fest is 
it's in a big, wide, open area. That's so true. there is some room there. There wasn't any congestion. You're right. right about that. I, I, yeah. I've been in beer fest before where it has been like Nuts you're packed the butts. in. Yeah. 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 Asses to elbows. Like mm-hmm. you're packed in there like sardines. Uh, with the convention center, there is oodles of space. Right. Mm-hmm. If there, you can't find your way elsewhere, you're <laughs> right. <laughs> you're not trying. <laughs> or you're seeing double. Four crusties. Uh, oh, damn. <laughs> we there? <laughs> uh, you know, it, it is a, a, I don't want to say well executed, but, you know, they've got the facilities there. They've got the facilities. They've, uh, yeah. they've got plenty of bathrooms available. Mm-hmm. I like that. And then... Uh, yeah, the thing is, is like, it, it's a really great venue. And my, my suggestion, kind of to fix the problem... Mm-hmm with the festival is maybe we need to sort of get rid of beers of the berg to put beers of the berg there i see what you're I saying i see what you're saying we need, I, I was going to say beers of the berg is a much better event oh no right. beers of the yeah, berg is awesome yeah I will but kick you off this show <laughs> but maybe we need to move it out of november and mm-hmm. set it up so pittsburgh beer fest brings in all of the pittsburgh breweries first Right. You know? Right. <laughs> Give, gives them all space and entices the reps to come out, mm-hmm. entices people who actually brew there to come out, so it doesn't just seem like volunteer amateur hour. Right. So it's just like, you know, volunteers on one side of the table and people looking to get blitzed on the other side of the table. That's true. Brewers <laughs> bingo. Yeah. Because <laughs> what, yeah, like we're talking to the rep from Duck Rabbit, and he wants to set Jack. up. Jack, yeah. Yeah, Jack, he's a good guy. <laughs> Dude, was funny. Uh, and he was talking about he wanted to set up Brewer's Bingo, or Beer Fest Bingo, really. Yeah. Because you can just look out into that crowd, of, and you can just see the same things over and over Sniping again. Sniping off stereotypes. Yeah. Yeah. Of just like... Everybody has a pretzel necklace, but that's a, you know, that's a free that's space. That's fine, though. Yeah. That happens at every beer fest. That's mm-hmm. fine. Right. But then you get people who just want to find the highest ABV beer and get shitty. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I think you can't get rid of those guys. No. But the one thing I just definitely want to highlight is these are opinions from veterans in the industry. If you're just stepping into craft beer, you will enjoy the Pittsburgh right. Beer Fest. Yeah, yeah. For right. sure. You will enjoy it um, until you become more enlightened. I don't want to say enlightened. No, right? that's, I think that's like, a bad way like, of putting it. Like you meditated no, in yeah. the Himalayan Alps. I have reached but Nirvana. Once, but once when you experience a lot with craft beer and you've seen it and you've already lived it, mm. then you wouldn't come to the point where, yeah. okay, I want something that's more personalized. Yeah, you'll, right. you'll more become that aware. One on one. What, yeah. Yeah. It's not enlightened. It's just mm-hmm. aware. Once I believe the kids Call Where? It, the kids call it woke. <laughs> woke. That's it. I'm not. When saying you woke, become but... more woke, I'll say that all day. You guys can say woke. I'm not. Saying woke. <laughs> so, I mean, a little bit of this conversation is old man yells at clown a little bit. A little bit, but it, it's damn kids and their frisbees in our yards. Yeah. <laughs> it, I think it's a real concern because it is. We, we've already talked about how we have too many damn beer fests. We do. So we do. I think a good way to kind of reduce both that fatigue. You know, it is to kind of combine beer fests that we already have. Right. Make make Pittsburgh Beer Fest great again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't we know. Will, I, I honestly we don't. We will not have, <laughs> what, it's not Magna Hats. What no. would that acronym be? Paga? Paga? Ooh, that sounds terrible. Pabaga? Pabaga Paga. Pabaga hats. Pittsburgh Beer Fest is again, great again. No, I don't know. Yeah, we're not good at English. It's no. Dip-a. terrible. You feel English? That's Pabaga. impossible. But one last thing that I did want to hit on was Dave from uh, Delirium, the Pink Elephant oh, Beer. Yeah. Man, that, that setup was phenomenal. He was giving out... Uh, Delirium elephant hats to wear. So no me, shit. My wife made sure she grabbed one because I actually proposed at an elephant uh, museum uh, and candy emporium. You know, so <laughs> I have so she, many questions. <laughs> that is a lot of questions, and I was nervous doing it. Not, you know, obviously she's the one for me, but because I've never been there, and I was like, really, you're going to choose this? You've never been there. We're just doing this right now. But it started raining as soon as I want to go propose. So it was like I even coordinated the rain 
which was great. But Dave over at uh, Delirium, that was just a wonderful setup. He had, uh, what was that one, Steve? A pomegranate and cherry? Yeah, well, the Delirium Red is yeah. the one that has the pomegranate and cherry. And yeah, it's a really lot good. Like, oh, it's, it's a lot you like You would the, have loved it. Yeah. Like the Omegon? Yeah, it's a lot like mm -hmm. the Omegon Rosetta and yeah. the uh, Castile Rouge. So, mm. yeah. And then they also had just regular Tremens. Tremens. Mm. Yeah, Tremens. Yeah. I had to go get some. It was good, good, man. It was yeah. phenomenal. I'm and big. we didn't have to pay $10 a glass, so that <laughs> yeah. was even better. I had to go to so, Safe to say, I definitely at least got $100 worth that first <laughs> night. Dead. For sure. I Dennis got my was putting worth. those away. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I mean, there were definitely some breweries that showed the hell up. Like, oh, yeah. Delirium did. Southern Tier did. Platform did. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to give a shout out to Hop Farm. Who really did? Yeah, yeah. Because they brought like six different taps. They brought some really good stuff that you, you don't necessarily get all the time. They had a smoked sour that I. Ooh, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, is that what you brought over? That's to what me? I brought over. Right, that was for delicious. <laughs> that was so tasty. So I'm gonna have to go down there too. Yeah, yeah. And then, and like right. they had reps and they had people willing to talk about beer. And yeah, they had, nice. They had everything. They showed up like it was a real beer. Fest. They yeah. did it right. Yeah. And they, on that topic, so Hop Farm reached out to um, Dave's crew down at Bruce Brothers in Mount Lebanon, um, what is it, a suburb outside of Pittsburgh? Castle Shannon. Castle yeah. Shannon. And his whole crew went down, you know, helping out Hop Farm, Green mm -hmm. Flash. So, and that's another thing I want to put out there. So, if you're going to have volunteers, like I said, everyone there, they did a pretty good job. But when you get people that, you know, may not work for that company, but they work within the industry... Um, bring them down. Like those guys are super passionate about beer and they carry some of the beer and they were actually able to have a really good opin opinion around the brews that they were pouring. So if you're going to get volunteers, get those, please. Yeah. Yeah. Get, yeah. Try to try to get people who know what they are talking about. Mm. So I guess those are our tips for fixing beer fest. One, make it, you know, inviting. Yes. For, you, get rid of beers of the Berg, I guess. <laughs> Not, not get rid of, of merge Ooh, yes. that merge yes. amalgam them <laughs> i mean you could still have both because i like the carry furnace location yeah. like i think that's cool well, right do, um but maybe take some pages out of beers of the bergs playbook right yeah find find ways to entice actually bring pittsburgh breweries in because when i walk in and i see a bunch of empty tables and then a trailer with no signage and then i go up to that trailer to find out what they're serving and it's full pint Mm -hmm. and there's nobody from full pint there and there's no sign saying it's full pint who is full pint what is full pint yeah it's like yeah. oh well what the hell <laughs> like yeah like i love you guys at every other festival right. but you <laughs> didn't want to really show up for this one and i feel bad and yeah. that's that yeah that's that yeah so i don't know just find ways to entice pittsburgh brewers back in make it something worth for them to go to Check us out uh, with the Hob Nation USA consulting firm. Yeah. <laughs> we'll help you out. Yeah, we'll, we'll fix it when we'll it's flat. We'll fix it next year, I guess. We'll, <laughs> we'll fix Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week, too. <laughs> we'll fix their wagon. <laughs> fix them. So I think that the, that wraps us up pretty nicely. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah. On to our, our next portion, of course, is the Victory Twisted Monkey. This is a Belgian-style blonde ale with mango. Not the Chris Catan mango, Ugh. but the fruit <laughs> mango. <laughs> I enjoyed it? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> kind of agree. It's a it's a it's a little sweet. It is. Yeah. It is. Like I get it. I know what they're going for and they they brought the mango. They got they the mango. No doubt about that. Yeah. They they just may have brought I don't know if I want, I want to say they brought a little too much or there wasn't much of a supporting cast around it. No, but, I no, it's they have plenty of supporting cast. The supporting cast is it's way too sweet. Is yeah. I think you can make a more subdued, mm. possibly subdued mango, make it a little more s subtle, a little more Belgian-y. Mm. Yeah, a little bit yeah. more well balanced, integrated yeah. between the two. Like I said earlier, you get you get the Belgian on the nose, but then the mango just hits you so hard. And I actually didn't get that Belgian on the back end, like Adam brought up earlier, until that that last sip. Um, I definitely got it. But one thing I wanted to throw out to you guys. I'm listening. What about doing a black and tan with this? With like doing oh. something like a stout and then with that guy layered. Oh. I mm. think that could be interesting. Like I want to play on that overindulging sweetness. If 
you did that, I would honestly go something really dry. Yeah, and, that's what I was thinking. Like, I mean, I would just go straight Guinness. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't try to find anything too sweet. The only other possible option I could it's think like a of. like porter. There's some, like, dry finished porters mm-hmm. out there. Well, you know what? We were just talking about that that King Titus yeah. main beer yeah. company. That would, that would work. So, okay. but I actually have one of those layering tools that I got from a small company that we nice. can use. Nice. The, the only other one I would suggest is um, Young's Double Chocolate Stout. Because even though it's Ooh, chocolate, yeah, yeah. even though true, it's chocolate, true. it's very, very bitter. Hmm. Huh. And dark. I, we need to do that because I I, th- I still think it's a well-made beer. It's mm-hmm. just a little too sweet right in the middle mm-hmm. of all those other flavor profiles for me. But if we mix that with a black and tan, I'm thinking we could, could do something fire. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. Those are your tips for... Playing at home, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Let us know how it goes. Make a black and tan with a with a dry porter or stout. Yes. Yes. All right. Let's take a break. And then it's on to segment three where something's going to happen. Yeah. Stop. Something. Steve's in charge. That's all I know. Stop. Things Shit. and stuff. <laughs> so good luck with all that. Good. Good. Well, ladies and gents, welcome to Lady Bitch Time. Lady Bitch Time is a program invented by me. You're a lady. Uh, not so much. I am like the most extreme tomboy on this planet. But that aside, this program was invented to bitch about whatever the fuck I am feeling like at this moment in time. You can bitch with me. In fact, in the future, I will be bitching about something that you need to bitch about. Who knows? I'm your host, Amanda. And new episodes will be airing every Tuesday on the Pew Pew Audio Network. So stick around, bitches. Welcome back to segment three. Of episode 96 of the Halt Nation USA podcast. Yes. Adam, have you come up with a Sporty Man reference at this I, point? I have. Okay. Oh, finally. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Ziggy Hood. Oh, okay. It is the Ziggy Hood episode. Oh, okay. He oh, is a former man. Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, if you want to, I know you've been... Uh, we're going way back in? at that point. No, Damn. no, no. Defense. I, he was in the trenches, I believe. I don't remember. <laughs> He's a... Was that 90s? Mm, 2000s? Two th- early 2000s? Late That's 2000s? early 2000s. Two- really? Ziggy Deuce, Hood? Deuce Staley was still on the team, wasn't he? Was he really? I bet he was. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, <bet he> <laughs> I don't know. But Ziggy Hood. Because I barely reckon, like, I definitely remember that name. Right. I could have swore that was earlier than, I don't know. I, the the uniform had the round numbers rather than the block numbers. Ah, yes. So that's that's got to get you at least 97 at the earliest mm. uh, was repeat right at what i said <laughs> well, i'm sorry i'm early I'm 2000s sending, i'm sending steve into a coma and i apologize uh, for that it just went too deep for me. <laughs> right. i've heard that once or twice. if you're looking for a nascar reference jj yaley way too far for me driver of the uh the 96 every once in a while Every once in a while, <laughs> like when he feels it, <laughs> hey, he's a he's a back marker anyway. When the other ones in the shop, <laughs> hey JJ, you want to go racing? All right, <laughs> load it up. Only oh, got that nine to six. <laughs> you got a trailer over here? Put that bitch up. We'll go. <laughs> you want to go Poconos? No, I don't go Poconos. This man only has three turns. <laughs> it's shaped like a triangle. <laughs> it's a stupid track. It is. It's kind of dumb. It's a weird. It's a weird place if for it, a track too. If it ain't a yeah. circle, it ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> if that shit ain't an ellipse, I ain't driving around it. <laughs> Who taught you ellipse, my granddad? <laughs> Grandpappy. <laughs> Grandpappy taught me about ellipses. I never did change my poopy pee pants. <laughs> Better have a big chaw in them ellipse. Because, <laughs> you know, it's... That's a bad joke. I'm My sorry. sister's got a bunch of moles on her face. <laughs> they call her Holy Moly. Oh, damn. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> That's fucked up. You're from Florida. Uh-huh. <laughs> stupid Dan Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dennis, for the love of all that is holy and decent, start the third beer. I wanted you guys to get the, all that out of the way. <laughs> no, you start the third beer or Larry the Cable Guy comes back. Oh, no. We're back, <laughs> we're back in there. So this next beer we got from our wonderful uh, East End, which is right here in uh, the heart of Pittsburgh on the East End. <laughs> this makes sense. We have the Green Giant, which is an all citra oh, hopped boy. IPA, clocking in at 7.2% ABV. This was one of their original recipes 
reviews from their uh, brewer um, that turned out to be one of their fasting selling uh, beers that they've ever had, which is really cool. A uh, An average of 96 people a month check in on Untap with that delicious brew there. So I'm super excited to dip into that and see what we got going on here. Crack it open. Please. And again, this was on tap at Pittsburgh Beer Fest. It was. And it was... That's what I'm told. It was, uh, I would say, my third favorite beer I had. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to say third favorite. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It was very good, though. I have never had this beer before. I don't know if you'll like it. I probably won't. Oh, Question no. mark. I, I got a little. I got a little splash in my tongue as I crack that bad boy open. I'm gonna hate it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I'll, I'll like it because it's East End. East That's End true. makes good beer. Scott, man, he's got going on down there. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna like this. Yeah, I, 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 took, <laughs> I, I took a sniff. I'm not gonna like it. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. This is uh, basically bear maze for Adam. <laughs> yeah. Bear maze that guy. <laughs> if he ever comes sniff around your picnic, you gotta hit him with the East End uh, giant. That way, I don't take your picnic basket. <laughs> That's true. You stay away from my balloon. You say which is. <laughs> so yeah, looking at the beer, it looks very similar to the first beer we had on the show. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, a, absolutely. Kind of that dark copper orange. Maybe a bit brighter. A little brighter, yeah. But the, uh, good looking unit. Yeah, the depends cl- on how the light hits it. Mm-hmm. It's also like the clarity is really good on this one. Yeah. This one still has a little bit of haze cloudiness to it, but I can see all the way through. I can see my finger. Mm. It's nice. <laughs> That's how light works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on the nose, hop. Hop. Oh, hop. yeah. Tons of hops. So, do we know what kind of hops are in this? Uh, thing? Citra. Did you already talk Citra. about that? I mean, I've read it briefly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just needed to remind it. <laughs> we do that a lot on this show. We really do. So, somebody doesn't listen, and they have to have things reconfirmed. <laughs> you guys out there don't know how many beers we actually drink. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to think that there was a listener out there who had the same exact question I did. Well, yeah. It's, and oh, I sure. saved the day for him yeah, or her. It's fun. I don't we all, mind we all doing do it. It's magic, best to restate. <laughs> magic school bus style, baby. We'll go on a trip. <laughs> What? <laughs> Children's programming always restates things. Uh, yeah, that's where I was going with that. From I didn't, a I gentleman didn't who that. grew up watching Top of the Pops, I thought you would have picked up. <laughs> no, <that>. I'm sorry. <laughs> As a person who actually wrote accredited children's programming for a time, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it's too busy watching that's Matlock. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's also good. Yeah. You're an interesting character, Adam. <laughs> not like a human character, just like just like a character, <laughs> character <and> like, <laughs> like a character on a TV show. No, not maybe not even a TV show. Maybe I'm thinking more folklore. <laughs> folklore. <laughs> Making no, moonshine in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah, I could buy I could buy Adam as a Johnny Appleseed type character. Yeah, yeah. Where he always gets in the shenanigans, but there's a life lesson to be learned. Mm-hmm. He doesn't learn it, but everyone he learn it, but you learn from him it, and <laughs> reading it, they learn it <laughs> i feel like i should be insulted but i'm not sure because we're doing it in a loving Poss- way right because we care not. <laughs> honestly i mean between him and his two brothers like the reardon boys seems like a like a series of books where you learn things but they don't learn things <laughs> are your brothers just like you <laughs> eh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no that, I mean, that's a good time, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> There's many stories to be told. <laughs> we don't have time for that, though. There are too many stories, some involving croquet mallets. <sighs> what? Yeah, see, see what he does? He teases it out. He so back, back to this beer. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> Now after the podcast, I'm going to find out about those and then their croquet mallets. <laughs> so, so you know what is telling a story? This the beer? Green Giant. Ha-ha. <laughs> More of a ho-ho. Green ho-ho. Giant. <laughs> Yum. Wait. That's not how that works. Nope. That's that's Red Robin. <laughs> it, to be fair, I, I, I didn't have cable growing up. I'm piecing together experiences I <laughs> shared was, over my friends' house. That was, piecing together <laughs> commercials. Red Robin is actually the exact opposite of a green giant. I would yeah. say opposite. I would say it's right on the side of it it's because you eat vegetables right next to your burger. <laughs> No, but hmm. a, a red robin is a small bird. Is a small bird, whereas a green giant is a green ah, giant. I see what you're a green giant is much bigger than a bird. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I know that. Shut up. <laughs> That's not a Jeopardy question. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I like this beer. It is malty. It is. It's, it's it's you actually get the malt on this one. You do. It's not hiding in there. No. <laughs> It, uh, to me, it kind of it does linger a little bit. 
I'm getting a, a, a touch of linger. Mm-hmm. Eh, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. No, no. Wait, not linger the hops or the malts? Mm, a little bit of both, actually. Mm. Both? Yeah. You don't like anything to hang around. You wanted to get no, in there and get, get the, the hell, out. hell out of the way. <laughs> Your assignment was to be here for 15 minutes, <laughs> not 20. <laughs> get out. What After 15 minutes, I can legally leave. <laughs> <laughs> Adam doesn't like a beer. Ask him what he's having for breakfast. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Better question. What are you still doing here? Yeah. <laughs> still good. <laughs> I think it's tasty. I think you do get a little bit of maltiness, but I think it's well balanced by the citra hops. Yeah. The, this beer is definitely balanced. It it has that bigness to it. It has that thick mouthfeel a little bit. But, you know, the, the, the hop isn't, I don't know, overpowering for me. <laughs> for me, <laughs> for I have to, me, I, I have to correct. S- state it that way. That's it, all right. Like it's not overpowering, but it's you know it's a real nice, easy drinker. I think they Again, made it for me. smooth enough yeah. to where I can have multiple of mm-hmm. those. Where traditionally it's either too heavy on the malts or too heavy on the hops. Where right. I'm going to have one and I'm going to move on. This guy, I can sling back three or four. Yeah, despite this one being big, like or giant, bigger, some bigger. Might say. <laughs> I mean, yeah, despite it being bigger, it's you know, like you said, it's only 7.5% ABV. 7.2. 7.2. Right. So, yeah. Well. So but who's accounting? Yeah, some people's accounting. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a little bigger mm-hmm. than normal, but it still isn't you know, like oppressive. It's not a triple IPA. It's not a. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. You can something that's going to sit you down. Yeah, you can deal with that's it. That's what yeah. you want. If you get one of those triples, you're putting Adam in a coma. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll want... just walk away. No, he'll just have a... <laughs> He'd smell it, slide it on the no. other side of the table, and leave. No, thank you. He'd just have a little but bit. But Adam, <laughs> we're in your studio. <laughs> I know. I'm out, boys. Lock up when you're done. <laughs> so, Steve, what are we doing? All right, well... I have devised a little bit of a game for us, Mm -hmm. and this game is brand new. Ooh, okay. But I'm glad Dennis mentioned Untapped at the top of the segment, because you guys are going to be using Untapped to play the game. I am ready. Ooh. I don't have a name for this segment yet. I'm sticking with working title as Fast Finders. Okay. Hmm. Fast Finders. You're going to figure that out, because the... Fastest finder is going to win. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. I feel like Adam's definitely better at the, like this data entry research than I am. Well, we'll see. We'll Let's see. Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. So the rules of the game go like this. I'm going to give you some clues for beers, and okay. you're going to have to find these beers on Untapped. And I'm going to ask for some specific information. So it's the first one to find that specific information. Okay. And return it to me. Wins. <laughs> Are we buzzing in or? Well, no, it's just going to be first one in. Okay. So you just got to run to the mic as soon as you figure out what I'm looking for. I'm already screwed. I don't run. Okay. I'm ready. Let's make All this right. happen. Well, we have a little bit of a theme going oh. for this uh, this episode of Fast Finders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fast Finders. Yeah. All right. That yeah. is good. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just working with it. It's sticking good. to me. The more, the more I say, the more I say it, the more maybe it works. So what's next week? If you're listening to this episode on Friday, as you should be. It's the first week of March. First week of March. Is it Ash Wednesday next week? Ash Wednesday, also Fat Tuesday, yeah. Wait, Mardi uh, Gras. Oh, damn. Yeah. I know, right? It's February's really over. Yeah, February's over. Dunzo. Yeah. If you're listening on Fridays when you should, that's as you today. Should. It's over. I don't even know what today is, to be it's honest. Over. The entrepreneurial <laughs> lifestyle, man. You only, it, That's okay. You don't, you don't need to know what days. today is because today's just record day. We don't, right. <laughs> we don't tell the audience when today, we record. we're in Narnia. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you're listening to this on Friday, as you should, then you got Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras, and Ash Wednesday all coming up. Yeah. And that's the theme of this week's Fast Finders. Fast Finders. That's Fast nice. Finders. I like that. That yeah. was like off the time. I do. Yeah. So, I'm going to give you guys a clue, and while you search for this beer uh-huh. and what I'm looking for, I'll read off some Mardi Gras facts. Okay. Because otherwise, there would be dead air that I would have to edit out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous. I'm not going to lie. Okay, let's do this. What do we got? All right. So, the first beer I want you to find, mm-hmm. being that it is Fat Tuesday, and it's also Mardi Gras, we know this. Yes. The first beer I want you to find is Brewed by a Beta. What is the most appropriate beer brewed by a beta? I want the name of the beer and the ABV, so I know you didn't just get it off the top of your heads. Ready? 
go. Mardi Gras box, 6.5% ABV. I should have told you guys not to do that. <laughs> Not to search while I was explaining. Oh, all right. <laughs> I realized that both of you were typing as I was explaining. This well, is a work in progress <laughs> game. To be fair, I've had the Dippa, and uh, my typing did not finish until you were done. Well, that's that's fine. By the way, we are not shilling for Untapped right now. Ah, uh, I see what you're saying. Nope, okay. just a fun tool. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't care if you use it or not. And the reason why I'm a little behind, I keep a little notebook in my pocket, all my beer facts, I just write in there, so I'm like a caveman when it comes to this <laughs> stuff. Just call him a baby's butt. He's a little behind. <laughs> oh, God. But just as smooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, double damn it. <laughs> all right. Are you guys ready to try again? Yes. I'll, I'll give Adam the point on this one, despite what we're working I with. I was within the rules that I was given. You were within the rules you were given. This time, do not start searching until I finish and say go. Okay. <laughs> Thumbs are off. So Thumbs go off. is the safe word. <laughs> go is the go word. <laughs> pineapples is a safe word. Ooh, I like pineapple. So another name for Fat Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday. This is what is commonly referred to in the UK and Europe. And Shrove Tuesday is commonly celebrated by eating pancakes. Ellicottville Brewery just released a brand new beer that's very appropriate to this. I want the name of the beer and the ABV. Go. So while they look for this, I want to give you a Mardi Gras fact. Did you know that the first Mardi Gras in America was not held in New Orleans? I did not know that. It was actually held huh. in Mobile, Alabama in 1703. This is 15 years before there was even a New Orleans to have a thing. <laughs> <laughs> there was no New Orleans. Got it. Okay, Adam, what is your answer? It is the Ellicottville Brewing Company Blueberry Maple Pancake. And you were looking for the IBUs, correct? ABV. The ABV is a cool seven. Adam has two points. This is Adam's strength, man. I couldn't even figure out how to spell Ellicottville until it was too late. <laughs> I'm sorry. You could have shot for pancakes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta, you gotta put your listening ears on because I'm gonna take you on some wild trips, especially <laughs> this next one. Okay, you need your listening ears. Are you I'm guys focused. ready? I'm focused. Are your, are your search bars clear? Are you ready for a new They're search? Clear phones yes. out of my hand. If you're down in New Orleans celebrating Mardi Gras, one of the places you might visit is Cafe Du Monde. Cafe Du Monde means the cafe of the world, or the People's Cafe. They're pretty famous for their beignets. However. If you wanted to celebrate the end of the world, what brewery would you go to? Oh, I, I, I want you to give me the name of the beer, the style, and the brewery that I'm looking for. Ready? Go. Here's another did you know fact. Got it. <laughs> this is Fart. insane. <laughs> Adam. This is insane. I can't. Well, it's Unibrow, Le Fin du Monde, and it's a Belgian triple. Yes, Le Fin du Monde is the end of the world. It is a Belgian triple from Unibrow. You can bring your La Fin du Monde to Café du Monde <laughs> and celebrate the end so, of the world. Uh, I think what we learned here is Adam has very fast thumbs. <laughs> Adam is very good at untapped. <laughs> I'm not. This was literally my first time using untapped. <laughs> oh, oh, all right. I'll give you a five-second head start on the next one. <laughs> oh. I'll, I'll showboat a little. Oh, all right. But, okay, is this in the last question, Steve? No, we have two more. All right, so this one I think should be worth... The this one, this one, this amount of points. Yeah, this one's worth one, and the last one will be worth three, I guess. Sure, I whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, all right. So, five second head start on both of them. I want it. No, if we both get a five second head start, then nobody gets a head start. No, no. no he I wants want he wants five second head start on the next two. This one and the uh, last one. Okay, all right. So, all right. I like I like this. I, I like this. Down in Thibodeau, Louisiana. There was a brewery by the name of Mudbug Brewery. They brew a beer called the King Cake Ale, and they call that the official ale of Mardi Gras. Now, King Cake is a Mardi Gras tradition that is uh, you know, made every Mardi Gras, and it has a little baby plastic toy baked into the King Cake. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. What is the most common spice in so King Cake? You, you said Mudbug was the brewery mud bug mud bug is the brewery but what i'm looking for is what is the most common spice in king cake is that available on untapped ready go one one thousand two one thousand three one thousand 
Four one thousand. Five one thousand. So if you eat a king cake and you're at a party and you happen to be the one who discovers the tiny plastic toy baby within Spice Golden? It's a spice golden now. I'm looking for what the spice is. If you find the baby within your piece of cake, then you are the winner and you get to bake the next cake for next Mardi Gras. Sometimes it's also passed on as a tradition that whoever finds the baby also holds the party as well. So you guys are searching. I didn't necessarily say this is on untapped. I did say what I was looking for. This is true. Assume both of you went and looked at Mudbug Brewery and mm. found that they do not give any damn information. That is also correct. <laughs> so you basically said I just wasted my five second head start. Yeah, that's why I said this was interesting because you could have you could have just decided to go right to Google. Yeah, I didn't know that was so. Well, yeah, I mean it's legal to do that. You're looking for what was it you were looking for again? What is the most common spice? Spice. Oh. Spice. Most common spice used this in sucks. a king cake recipe. Got it. Physically can't get into the website. Adam. <laughs> Nutmeg? I'll accept that. The Whole spice. Well, it, no. <laughs> I just well, got no. to the website. It wouldn't let me in. So you could have yeah, you could have just done it on <laughs> Google. The, no, I was the, trying to do yeah, it on Google. What I was really looking for was cinnamon. Cinnamon is the most common spice used in king cake. I almost yeah. went with cinnamon. Well, I, no, I mean, I'll still give it to you because that's also pretty common. The reason I was going to say that because it, there were several entries on Untapped that had a cinnamon rim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Also, fun fact, did you know that Tubido, Louisiana is the home of Amos Moses? I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Of Jerry know. Reed fame. Huh. <laughs> Thanks. That's Adam <laughs> with the facts. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> that's a fantastic song, by the way. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Listen to it on the way home. I can't. Yeah, you can. I only have CDs. <laughs> Dude, just turn up your phone. Fair enough. <laughs> All awesome right, bring choice. you guys, bring yourselves back to home base of Untapped. Get yourself ready for a new search. Adam has four points. Dennis has zero points. And we all know. I'll make this one worth five. Ooh. Okay. I'll make this one worth five. I still got the five second. You already agreed to it. <laughs> this, this is bullshit. <laughs> what? A he sucker. did. I will inform you, you have to go outside of untapped. Okay. It, it, it didn't seem very clear on the last one. I assumed maybe you guys would have just tried it. No, because you said this is for well, untapped. Well, no, I said, I said <laughs> be prepared to use seconds, untapped. I, I said, just thought I didn't yeah. know how to use it, yeah. and I was doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I said be prepared to use untapped. Okay. But you can go outside if you can find it. It's a work in progress. It's just untapped is usually a lot quicker for these answers. Right. Okay. But not this you, one specifically. Not this one you you this is a two step because this is our last question. This is a two step so you'll need to do untapped and the internet. Okay. I right. got it. All right. So, Abita has beers in a series named after the infamous Bourbon Street. Obviously, these beers are aged in bourbon barrels. I want you to find a what specific bourbon these barrels are aged in and then find the suggested retail price of a 10-year bottle of that bourbon. Ready? Oh, go. Jesus. 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1000. So I'm looking for a specific brand of bourbon and then the suggested retail price of a 10-year bottle of that bourbon. So, a fun Mardi Gras fact. Did you know it's illegal to ride on a Mardi Gras parade float without a mask? I did not know that. Now you do. The carnival season also begins on King's Day, which is January 6th. It's also known as the Feast of the Epiphany, which is another Catholic thing. <laughs> <laughs> another Catholic it's thing. It's all Catholic stuff. <laughs> it's just a bunch of Catholics getting drunk and having a good time. Did you know that Cracker Jack boxes were once a common item that were thrown in the Mardi Gras parade? This is also going back to the Mobile, Alabama days of the parade. But they were banned in 1950 because they had sharp corners and were hitting people in the eye. Sounds like lawn darts. Yeah. Other things thrown that other, other than beads include moon pies and coins. Coconuts were popular for over 100 years thrown in the parade but became illegal in 1988 because, again, don't throw coconuts in the crowds. 
I got one half. I just need the second half. Adam has a half. So if I answer that, it means I get two and a half points. So I automatically win. Mm. Right? Well, you sure, but not. So if you answer wrong on this, uh-huh. you get so, a zero and, there, and there's no second chance. Because, it's just a suggested 10 years, what you said. Yeah, I said the suggested retail price for the 10 year. Fifty nine ninety nine. Of what, Dennis? Oh, I'm sorry. Happy Van Winkle. <laughs> Dennis gets five points. <laughs> yes! 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 <laughs> All we had to do was bring bourbon in the mix. <laughs> yes, Dennis, Dennis got correct. The Abita Bourbon Street Barrel-Aged Imperial Stout is mm. aged in Pappy Van Winkle bourbon barrels. That's some high dollar shit. Yeah. The the rest of their uh, bourbon ser- bourbon street series, I can't speak to whether or not they're aged in Pappy Van Winkle. They mm. don't say explicitly; they just say small batch bourbon barrels. That could be anything, right? But Pappy's known for being really expensive. Right. I actually That's, thought, yeah, that it was going to be a lot more expensive. I thought it was going to be well over a hundred dollars. Well, it is usually. That's why I said suggested retail price because mm. on the Pappy Van Winkle website and I believe on some other websites, it tells you what the suggested retail price is for ten dollar or for ten year, and it's fifty nine ninety nine, like you said. Mm-hmm. Usually, it goes for about a thousand. Yeah. 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 It's silly. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's so silly. It is That's why I made sure I read that and it said suggested. And right. I was like, I have to be in the clear or else this person's wrong. <laughs> that, and, but that's the thing is that's the only solid number that you can get. Every yeah. it, like it varies now, between like nine hundred to is it like secondary market like with craft beer? It's all beer? secondary like, it's market. So it's, yeah. like small like mm-hmm. that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Adam, who's a winner? Me or you? We're all winners on this split day. That's not what Yay. the scoreboard says. <laughs> it's not what the scoreboard says. After I'm getting the rules changed on me. <laughs> I wasn't using your Wi-Fi like you were. Why aren't you on my Wi-Fi? I don't have your password. It's right over there. We're about to become really, really good friends. Okay, then. <laughs> it's on the router. It's on the router. Like every know. other password you know, in America. <laughs> well, yeah, the primary one. No one ever leaves it as a password that's on the router. Why? Why wouldn't you? Because you want to make it your own. No one wants to remember bets seventy right. three forty cared ninety gum. That's because I still use the same password on my router. You see, <laughs> here's the thing. I got this neat little feature on my phone that says remember. Yeah, but when you do, wait. Do you have an iPhone? No. Oh. Well, you should be familiar. With Android. When you do a full update, it forgets everything for no reason. <laughs> oh. Mine, mine didn't. Oh, <laughs> yours hasn't upgraded for a while. Nah, yeah, nah, it's like two years. It's like two years old. I'm it's finally, done. <laughs> it's yeah. no okay. longer exactly. <laughs> we have lost children phones. They don't. <laughs> yeah. Nobody lost bothers them. No. Nobody, like, nobody bothers them with updates or anything. Right. What does that mean? A lost child phone. That the the the, the manufacturer and the constru- the developers have forgotten our platforms. Oh, damn. damn. They've moved on to bigger yeah. and better things. Yeah. They can't develop stuff for us anymore. They leave <laughs> Wait, us be. So you're basically rocking the Windows XP of mobile phones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, no, I actually miss Windows still, XP. I mean, it still works fair enough, except for Instagram. That takes a bunch of times right. of reloading and clearing cache. And right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> but, uh, as long way. as I can charge it, watch videos. and scroll on the internet and make phone calls and take pictures, I'm good. That yeah. actually sounds like a lot. That you do with your phone. I had no idea you did that much. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Pretty sure I did all of that on the phone today. I, to be fair, I'm still expecting to find a rotary phone around You were here. part of some of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Yeah, well, that's the end of the game. That was the end of Fast Finders. Dennis won five to four. Bullshit. Yeah, well, hey. It's on you, Adam. Just so you it's, know, it's an evolving game. For, for the record, <laughs> for the record, I don't think that five seconds would have made a difference. No, it didn't. It really didn't. <laughs> did you even find that Pappy Van Winkle? I did find that. That was the part I was solid on. It was the price I couldn't find. Ah, it. yeah. You just gotta search Pappy Van Winkle price. You get. No, I put suggested retail and it popped. You get right that up. too. Game's over. Go back to the beer. Green Giant. Everybody love it. No. Green Giant. Oh, that's a shame. Why not?
because it's because <laughs> it has IBUs over three. Yeah, <laughs> that's why Adam hated it. We've met, right? <laughs> I just need you to reiterate it for the audience. This could be somebody's first episode. It's not my jam. I don't like IPAs. Yeah, and this is this is definitely on the classic side of IPAs. It's, it rarely is. It's not the the hazy boy. It's not a soft IPA. Nope. It's it's a classic IPA. It's not a milkshake. It's not. No. It's not silly pastry nonsense. It's, it's not. Uh, <laughs> Well, it's not what like else is, what else is silly out there it's not made with cereal it's not <laughs> right drop I'm it out not of an airplane all those hero beers what's no, no. the one catching tons of flack right now made of what lucky charms if i yeah. recall yeah yeah which what is stupid because we i don't even know it they somebody with marketing money because we've been drinking cereal beers for i don't yeah, know how it's long it's not new yeah. But what they did, they were actually kind of smart. They got out there on platforms with people that know nothing about craft beer and thought it was something new and cool. Exactly. And blasted about it and created a scenario where we're having a conversation about mm-hmm. it right now. Yeah. <laughs> we're, uh, we're talking more about marketing rather yeah. than that actual beer. Right. Right. We don't care. We don't even about... remember what the beer is. Yeah. It's just a Lucky Charm beer. It doesn't matter. Like, we've had beers made with cereal and marshmallows and shit all the time. Like, that's just... It's old, old news. That's it's old hat here. Course. Yeah. <laughs> we're into it. We like them. Yeah. But it doesn't surprise us. No. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, we just brewed with cereal not too right. long ago. <laughs> yes, and I'm yeah. looking forward to that one. Yeah. Teaser, like, hush, teaser, hush, teaser. Hush, 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 hush. No, we're not. I'm not saying nothing. Damn yeah. right you're not. Let's get back to the Green Giant. Yeah, all right. I'll, I'll stop threatening Just because we forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Green Giant. I don't. Okay. Dennis? Tiebreaker. Oh, I love it. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Then you lost. Sorry. I, I'm okay with that. Adam, that's twice you lost in this segment. <laughs> I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'll save it for the latter rankings. That's fine. On this show, Which we, we could give medals. We we're, could we're, jump we're, into that. Yeah, we're we going to that right now. Everyone gets a participation award. So, no. so why don't you lead us off, Dennis? All righty. So for me personally, bronze is going to go to the Victory Twisted Monkey, the Belgian Blonde Ale. Now, Victory is a really, really good brewery, near and dear to my heart. They put out a lot of really good brews. This one here specifically, getting that heavy Belgian on the nose, but it was just too sweet for me. I think it's a good cocktail beer. If you want to play around with it, do some fun, crazy stuff. I'm planning on doing a cool black and tan with it. I think it has a place for for me in that category, but not as a standalone beer. Silver is going to go to the Crane Room Dippa, the double IPA. It was super tasty, well balanced, definitely really enjoyed it. It was just, you know, kind of average in my heart. Um, but number one, for sure, getting a gold, bringing it home to Pittsburgh, is the Green Giant from East End, that all citra hop IPA. It was, I know I said the Crane Room double IPA was well balanced, but this was on a whole new level of being balanced. Um, the maltiness and outweigh the hops, they married each other in such a way. That's one of the first uh, hop forward beers that I can have one right after the other. So that's right in the forefront of my fridge at the top of my shelf um i would definitely have multiple of those again in my near future mic drop don't drop our mics no <laughs> i will move. they're expensive yeah we're still making payments <laughs> yeah still, still, they're still on layaway they don't know that we're oh, taking damn, them. he said that kmart layaway <laughs> we had to, we had to smuggle them out of kmart Man, that was because every, kmart closed that was every christmas we had stuff on layaway. oh yeah i know that yep. life Yep. <laughs> and then, like, you try to figure out what it was, and then your mom was making a payment, and then you're like, what is it? And she doesn't fucking tell you, and you're all upset. <laughs> she said, did I tell you before we came to the store, don't ask for none, because you ain't getting none yet, yeah. mom, but you can't get nothing. layaway payments, I mean, someone's getting something. That's right. You know you're getting something, but you can't get anything while you're at the store that day. Ugh. And then you're just happy you got dinner at home. Yeah, it made no sense to the kid brain. No, it made no sense to the kid brain. It doesn't make sense. And now. obviously, it didn't make <laughs> fiscal sense because layaway isn't a thing anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense anymore because now we have Amazon. So mm. it's d- doubly true. <laughs> All right. So I'm just basically going with Dennis. That's my rankings. Uh, it, it's 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 the Twisted Monkey at Bronze. It's a little too sweet. Just a little too much. Could be fun if you just trying out all the monkey series at once to see the different mm. variations. That's probably a fun thing to do. 
Try that out, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Not kids, kids. I, mean, I just say that, but children over the age of 21. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we don't is. do that intro anymore. No, we don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, try it out. Yeah. Uh, you know, silver, I'm going to give to the CR Brewing, Crane Room, Dippa. Yeah, it's a fine beer. I don't find it as balanced as Dennis did. I think it's very hot forward. And, I mean, that doesn't bother me much. I like that. And I like the fact that it's actually fresh. Mm. And, you know, it has that freshness. It has that hoppiness to it. It's not malty like most Dippas are. So, yeah, I like that. But gold's got to go to the Green Giant. <laughs> it's a gold metal beer. It's just much better than all the other ones. And it's called a giant. How do you not love it? <laughs> if you don't love it, you're not a Hulk Hogan punk. You're an ugly man. <laughs> I feel like he was talking right to you, Adam. I think he was. He's like, like looking through me <laughs> saying that. I feel like Andre the Giant is Steve's spirit animal. Yes. Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a thing. He died and I was born. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Wait. Whoa. Whoa. No. All right. No, no, okay, no, cool. no. He didn't die the same day I was born. It's same not... year? I don't know. Hey, look at him. Yeah, same well, year, because you can round up. You could have needed a little long in the oven. Yeah. No. Nah, thing. I don't know. Somebody figure that out. All right. <laughs> we need an intern. So, I'll jump in on it. Uh, my rankings will actually be different from you guys, to the surprise of no one. <laughs> <laughs> Unless this oh, is your really? first show. In the bronze medal position uh, is going to be a little bit of a surprise. I am going to put the victory uh, Twisted Monkey in the bronze medal position. Huh. Uh, it was that sweetness that it had on it. I, I, I didn't find it enjoyable. I, I thought it was too sweet for its own good. Uh, and it, it didn't find a good place for itself. I just didn't enjoy it that much. I liked the mango taste. I think it was just too sweet. Maybe a little bit too much mango-y. Mm-hmm. Wasn't a fan. Wasn't a fan. Uh, in the silver medal position, I am going to put the East End, uh, Green Giant there. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? The sound of Dennis being shocked. <laughs> that was How my gasp. would you go against the group? To be fair, it's the first time I gasped in a really long time. It surprised <laughs> me, too. <laughs> well, yeah, the uh, the East End Green Giants going in the silver mantle position. Uh, it's a well-crafted beer. I know exactly what they're going for. Obviously, it's a good, fe- a good beer for those that like that style because uh, my... Uh, Two co-hosts here put it in the gold medal position, and I like to think they know a thing or two about beers. They drink it. I've seen it. They know what they're talking about from time to time. Uh, but to me, it, just the way it finished, uh, it it didn't get the gold medal position because of that. Uh, what did, however, was the CR Brewing, the double IPA. Uh, I liked it for the fact that it got out of the way. I thought it was a well-crafted beer. Yes, I'll say it. For the style, it, it was a good beer. <laughs> do the catchphrase. <laughs> do do the Adam thing. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. Make that money. Do the catchphrase. <laughs> Some t-shirt. I'd be used over 30. Do the Adam thing. <laughs> so for the style, it was a very good beer. I liked it. Uh, and I'm very curious to see what CR Brewing uh, has on tap up in their tap room. I'm definitely mm. going to have to take a trip up to Newcastle. And find out what they're all about up there, or just go to JR's next time it's on the Crowler system. I could do that, <laughs> but I could just go. To, I could just go to Newcastle. Yeah, you can do on that. On my way to you get them all. Yeah. yeah, you can see what everything they have. I mean, they have a portfolio of five, six beers. Right. So you could probably have them all in a day. But if they do them all as good as that one, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll snag them. Yeah, I mean, definitely, it's it's well made. Do so, they can? Do you guys know? Probably not. Mm, probably just no, draft, I don't think draft plus Crowler. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's just draft, mm. and like the only reason why. You can get it at JR's is because they just got kegs. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Sense. So yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't think they. I don't think they're big enough. They're too new, and they're definitely not big enough. I don't think right. because they're just uh, n- nothing against Newcastle or anything. But you know, that's out in the middle of Bumblefuck. It's not a big bird. <laughs> well, yeah. Where coincidentally, tons of people love drinking. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah. I assuming that's why they're doing well. Yeah. yeah. At least I think they're in out there, right? There's not too much. Else. I can't think of too much else. I, yeah. I think there's one or two. I uh, would. Uh, 
Crooked Tongue, I think, is up that way. Okay. Mm. Uh, I know there's one or two up in the Sharon area. Which what's, is the, not... what's the one with the frog that we always forget that's like a home brewing uh, concern? We always forget about croak, that one. Croaking Frog, something like that? Mm, I don't think it's Croaking Frog. You're just trying to say Crooked Tongue again. <laughs> <laughs> he just said it with mixing up some letters. <laughs> Croakers? Croakers. There we go. Oh, cr- cr- what yeah. did you say a second ago, Adam? Croaking Frog. Croaking Frog. <laughs> he's, he's Crooked Tongue? Trying... Cro- croaked frog. <laughs> it was close. Yeah, croakers. That's like a uh, uh, copper kettle for the Beaver ah, County area. Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But they do home brews and yeah, they do some good stuff. We've had from them. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, that's uh, good for CR Brewing though. They got their first gold on their first episode. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coming out of the gate, CR Brewing. You can find them at JR's, also known as Steve's. <laughs> Steve's. You can find them at JR's, and you could find them at P- uh, the Pittsburgh Beer Fest. Yeah. But, uh, not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Be that's, fair, that's you, over. You that was may actually be able to find them at Steve's. <laughs> yeah. If you want to find us though on social media, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA, and that'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, then search Hop Nation USA on your favorite podcatcher like Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Yes, I gotta do the question because we're. <laughs> I don't know. I keep changing the name. I know. Also, Spotify. Listen on Spotify. Spotify's been doing good numbers. Yeah. You threatened them a couple weeks ago. Now those numbers are up. <laughs> <laughs> good work, Adam. Here to help. But if we're on, uh, if you're on Apple Podcasts, all you have to do is leave us a five star review because we are a six star show. But they only let us use five, and that's a terrible, terrible crime. But we hope to rectify it in the future when we buy Apple. Yes. Yeah. And Google. And Google. And well, we're gonna make them fight. Make them fight. <laughs> like a couple of dirty Solid dogs in a pit. <laughs> yes, I, that's all I dream about, Adam, is software engineers <laughs> fighting each other to the death. <laughs> I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> Dennis? In the meantime, at them there, uh, brew boxes. Check us out first at brewbox.com, at first at brewbox on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube's all the social media platforms. We are on all of them. Check out our pet brew box, which we are pre-ordering. Find a link for that through Instagram and Facebook. If you guys have any questions, it's Dennis at First Hit Brew Box. Get a hold of us. We'll take care of you guys. Send you out some cool, unique craft beer swag from small breweries all over the country featuring small businesses and in creating opportunities where opportunities did not exist before. And uh, if you get a chance, see uh, find the social media posts about your FedEx Grant yeah, business. Yeah, thanks, Steve, for yeah, bringing that. that up. So we're actually in the running for a FedEx small business grant for $50,000. Think of all the crazy cool stuff we can do and deliver value back to the craft beer community. If we're able to get that, we're able to increase uh, the brand awareness around small breweries and small businesses all around the country. So again, hit us up on our Facebook or Hop Nation USA, uh, their Twitter. They're sharing that stuff on there as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're getting that stuff in there like swimwear sliding in the dms of customers and constituents all around the country so uh go and hit us up on that please vote once per day it'll help us out immensely we appreciate you and we love all of our bugaboos out there don't be a mark ass buster voting closes <laughs> april 1st is this where i mentioned trick ass marks or mark ass tricks and call it good no, we're just doing drinking partner references, oh, and right. I wasn't okay. even on the episode. Right. It's been a long time since I felt like I was having asthma attack. <laughs> I can't breathe. I'm turning blue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, that's, uh, that's about it for episode 96 as we march ever closer to episode 100 without a plan (laughs) 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 or an idea of what to do if you have an idea email us at hopnationusa at (laughs) gmail.com boom stay cool call it good 97 will be something else later penis. <laughs>